This is Kester Flux. It is a rosin flux and it is, uh, Kester is a very good brand. It's good stuff, but I don't uh, use a whole lot of it. And when I have to buy it, it's, the price is always kind of a, a shock. So I thought that I would try to make my own. I saw it on the internet and you get the rosin. You can buy the rosin and you mix that with isopropyl alcohol. I might try ethyl alcohol too. And then you put that in your favorite dispenser, whether it's a needle bottle like this, or whether it's one of these, they call them a, a paint pen. And it's got a valve in here so that when you press the thing, it releases it. And that works a lot like this. This also has a valve in it so that when you push, it dispenses the flux. So yeah, we've got it all. Um, now I just need to go out and weigh out one gram of this for every 10 milliliters. So they said one, uh, one gram or two grams per every 10 milliliters uh, to your preference. So yeah, just need to go measure that out and mix it with the alcohol and then give it a try. To make our DIY flux, we're going to need 99% pure isopropyl alcohol. It's better if you get the kind that's not denatured because that leaves behind a little bit more residue. Yes, you have to clean off flux anyway, but uh, that's just a little you know less to clean up. I need a way to measure 10 cc's of the isopropyl alcohol. So I've got a syringe, uh, goes up to five cc's. So that'll, that'll work. Uh, my block of repair, rosin repair flux, it says right there, looks like that. It's kind of a yellowish gold color, uh, a way of measuring out one gram. So I've got a postal scale and then I got my piece of paper. And what I plan to do is I'll weigh the paper first. Then I'll shave off enough flux onto the paper uh, to equal one gram uh, and of course remove the weight of the paper and then we mix them and then we give it a test. I've got my 10 cc's of alcohol in this little bowl and I got my bottle ready to go, my needle bottle. And what I'm doing right now is I am scraping out two two grams of rosin, which is what I need. And you want it kind of fine because if you get the big chunks, it won't dissolve readily. So yeah, if it's in a fine powder like this, it, uh, it dissolves rather readily. Okay. So I'm going to keep doing this until I get my two grams and I got my scale back here. Um, so and when I get my two or two grams, when I get my one gram, it'll show up as two grams on the scale because of the weight of the paper, but get my one gram of powder and one gram of paper. Uh, and then we will put it in the mixing bowl and we shall actually, it might be a better job, a better idea to put them both in this bottle and then just shake the bottle to, to, uh, yeah, because this stuff is kind of sticky. So you want the least number of things to clean up when you're done. So I think I'll do that. I'll just put it all in this bottle and then mix it. Okay. I'll keep at this. I'll get my gram of, of powder and then I'll come back and we'll mix it up and go from there. And there we have our two grams. We will put it in our needle bottle. Okay, now we get our 10 cc's of alcohol. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
and we give it a good agitation. And then all we have left to do is go try it. While I was making this homebrew flux, I got some of it on my hands and it was very sticky. And compared to the commercial flux, yeah, the commercial flux, I deliberately put some on my finger and it was not sticky. And in fact, what I did is I put it on this old phone right here. So right next to this white dot is, is the commercial and next to this white dot is the homegrown and doing a highly scientific sticky test. That's not sticky at all. Whereas this, yeah, I could pick up the phone <laughs> with it. So it set me thinking that something is not right. You can see the amount of residue left. And I'm starting to wonder if the ratio of the rosin to the alcohol is wrong. So I looked it up on the internet. Let me show you what I found. So I went back to make sure I had the formula correct, that it was one gram per 10 cc's of IPA, isopropyl alcohol. And yes, in fact, that's it. Uh, 10 cc's of IPA is 7.85 grams, and one gram of rosin would be one over 7.85 or 12.7 percent. Now, I'm not a math genius or a chemist. Um, I don't know if that's a good number or not. 12.7%, uh, that might be reasonable. But uh, again, the rosin feels kind of sticky, so I'm wondering if that's a bit high. So I went over and I looked on the website for the commercial rosin flux, and they list solids at 2%. So that would be 6.1 times less than that number per the 10 cc's. To make a 2% rosin solution in 10 cc's of IPA, well, okay, so we start out with a 10 cc requirement, uh, and the alcohol weighs 0 0.78509 grams per cc, 10 cc's, multiply that by 10, so you get 7.85 grams, 2%, so we want 2% of that, so 0 0.02 times 7.85 is 0 0.157 grams of rosin needed. So yeah, that's a whole lot less than one gram. Now I can't, I can't weigh this right now. My uh, little postal scale is not even accurate really to one gram. So I have ordered a $2 scale online, a digital scale that's supposed to be accurate to 0 0.01 grams. And then we'll try remixing this and we'll do a comparison. I've replaced the postal scale with this $2 scale I got online. And I have teared it out and I now have my 0 0.15 grams of the rosin. And we can see that when I pick this up, you can see that the paper weighed about 0 0.41 grams. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in our 10 milliliters of alcohol that I've already got measured out over here. Move that out of the way. And we'll mix it up. well and then we will put it in our paint pen there we go get that out of there and yeah trying to pour the powder into here and then shaking it well it seems like it's a good idea but it didn't work very well One. That's completely full. Okay, put our valve back in. Screw this back on. Some people like to use uh, just a touch of glycerin or glycerol in here. And I'm gonna try that. I got some on order and I will add some later. But I guess right now what I need to do is go up and give this a test and compare it against the uh, commercial grade stuff. And I'll also compare it against, uh, so this is the 2%, and I'll also compare it against the, what was it, 12% that we made. 
Here is our test setup. This is the commercial and I'll put a dab in here where it says C. This is the original batch I made. This is 12%. We'll put a dab in that circle. And this is the 2% we just made. Put a dab in that circle. And then we will try to solder it. Um, and the copper down here is my old Radio Shack bought from a store going out of business from years and years ago. Uh, circuit board, it's kind of a low quality one, but should suffice. Um, and that's it. So let's do this thing. Okay, first with the commercial. Ah, it dissolves the marker. Great. Okay, clean soldering iron. Touch and... Okay, yeah, it flows very nicely and very quickly. Okay, now to the 12% solution. My guess is this will work. It's just going to be, whoa, OD'd on that. It's going to be uh, kind of overkill and messy. Well, you know, a little, a little, this, yeah, okay, but good wetting overall. In fact, I'd say better wetting than that. And then we shall try what we just made and see if we can, there we go. Keep the uh, circle from running. We'll put down our soldering iron. And yeah, good wetting. Um, so I guess the last test is we want to see how much residue is left. So I will pick a area on the circuit board. We'll put down a dab. We'll let it evaporate. And then we're going to see how much stuff is left that we would have to clean off the board when we were done. I'm not going to try the circle again. Uh, just going to put down a good drop of this stuff of each one of them, try to get equal amounts. And then we will let it evaporate. That's roughly the same size. And yeah, roughly the same size. And this dispenser I like because it doesn't just dump it out. It actually gives you just about the right amount. So I'm trying to match these others and it is yeah okay so it you're saying well it's not coming out of there very fast but that's actually the point you don't really want a lot and these first two really just dump it out of there and let's see if I can cheat a little bit and squeeze on this thing oh, there we go And I'd say, yeah, we're about the same size. Okay, now we just let it sit and evaporate. These are our three fluxes. And let's see if you can see that. There's still a drop on this one. Um, my guess is it is either glycerol or water remaining in the flux like that. Um, this one in the middle is dry and this one is also dry. So let me try the scientific test of putting my finger in it. Oh, very sticky. Okay. Different finger. Slightly sticky. And this is not going to be sticky because it's still wet. Yes. Yeah, it feels like glycerol. So it is, the glycerol seems to help in the removal of the flux. It keeps it soft, if you will.
and then you can kind of wipe it away with your finger. This, I would not want to have to clean. You can, I mean, you can see, I can pick up the board with it like that. <laughs> so that's messy. And this one is more along the lines of what I would expect. So any of these three seem to work as far as soldering flux goes. I mean, they all wetted the board. They made it easier to solder. They removed any corrosion that was on the board. And this is quite an old board. Um, this is the easiest one to remove, the commercial. The 12%, which we can no longer read, is a very sticky mess. Um, and I don't see any benefit over the 2%. So I think that what I'm going to do is, in the future, I will make mine a 2% uh, solution and with a little glycerol added, I'm going to try that experiment. But for right now, uh, the way it stands, I'm going to use this 2% because it's uh, very cheap to make, extremely cheap to make, and I'm out of the commercial grade stuff. So yeah, go with this. And this 12%, I, yeah, I just don't see any benefit and I see a whole lot of drawbacks with cleanup. Okay, well that was it for our experiment in creating your own homebrew solder flux. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY electronics work.